It's interesting how certain bodies of water get to be recognized with a particular fishing presentation. For example, the Detroit River is widely recognized as a jig fishing paradise. That may be true, but if you visit the Detroit River in June and tie on a bottom bouncer and spinner rig, you'll soon look at this water much differently. On this week's episode, our very own Mark Romanak teams up with Captain Don Ole of Fishu's Charters. Mark and Don dive deep into the advantages of using a bottom bouncer and spinner rig to catch river walleye. What's the secret to success? Well, you'll just have to tune in and see for yourself. Oh no, I may have waited too long. Let's see. Oh, I right think he might be there. I think he might be there. Oh yes. Well, welcome to the Detroit River. And uh, we're gonna do things a little differently than you might expect today. Most people think of Detroit, all they can think about is jigging, and it is a world-class jig fishery, no question about it. But that's not the only way you can catch them. <laughs> And uh, we're going to be using something called the bottom bouncer and spinner today. A classic for catching walleye, even in flowing water. Just a lot of folks don't realize that. Hey, Don. That's a better fish, Mark. Well, I'll tell you what. That is a little bit nicer quality fish, and uh, it looks like the kind a guy might want to eat. And uh, we got some cool things going on today. Oh boy, he really choked it right down there anyway. So this is definitely one that I'm gonna put in the live well because by the time I get that hook out of there, it's not gonna be pretty for him. But that is about the perfect size fish for the table. And uh, we plan on doing that a little bit later today. Turn so, him into a catching cook. A catching cook, yeah. I call them fish sandwiches. <laughs> Very cool. Another fish going here, Mark. Looks like a pretty solid bend right in that right. rod. Right here in front of the silos with the whiskey plant where they make Canadian Club. They give away free samples? Well, they probably would if we went and asked. <laughs> this is one of my favorite spots on the river here, right here in front of the silos. An excellent place. Another eater class, though. This guy right here is on the small side, but uh, we've been getting a lot of fish pulling spinners in the 20 to 24 inch class here lately and hopefully we can land on them again here today. It was a lucky day, he gets to go back. Captain Don, I'm hooked up. Got one there, Mark? Yes, I am. Yes, I do, I am hooked up. Well, like we started to say a little bit about bottom bouncers, 
excuse me, it is a uh, iconic presentation for catching walleyes, but most people associate them with uh, natural lakes, flats, that kind of stuff, and they work real well there, but they also work well on the flats and rivers. There's a little bit of a trick to it. We're going downstream, and that is an important thing here. Um, you just can't get a bottom bouncer to the bottom going against the current. It's a little bit better fish here, Don. That's good. That's a good one. Well, oh, he's giant, but he's definitely a little bit better. I'm going to oh, need a net. I'm over here minding my own and not paying attention to your fish. Oh, that's not a problem. There we go. Actually, just about the same size, but uh, uh, as I was saying, the trick to this is going with the current. You can't fight the current with a bottom bouncer, but if you go with the current and go just a little bit faster than the current, fast enough to get your blades rotating, uh, that bottom bouncer will work very, very well on river flats. And that's what we're looking at here. It's this massive flat. Fish are all scattered. You can see this is a small male. That's what we're going to be dealing with today. I doubt we'll even catch a female today. Don, what do you think? I don't believe so. I think pretty much most of them have pushed out of the river by now. Yeah. We do get a late push once in a while. We had one about two weeks ago. That was a pretty good push. So, so, so it is what it is. Um, it's eater class fish today um, on bottom bouncers in the Detroit River. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics and Daiwa Corporation. Well, we've talked that uh, we're fishing bottom bouncers. Let's take you step by step right through the basic setup here. And in my hand is the bottom bouncer, and this one happens to be a four ounce bottom bouncer. They come in a lot of different sizes. The common sizes here on the Detroit River are gonna be a three, fours, and fives. A uh, little deeper water, obviously you need a little bit bigger bouncer. And then here on the terminal end, there's a little snap, and it runs down to my leader. And if I can get my leader to come up here, this leader is 15 pound test fluorocarbon line. And on the business end, of course, there's my blade. That's a Hildebrandt blade and uh, a couple of red number two octopus hooks and of course my night crawler. You can tie your own crawler harnesses, a lot of guys do. These happen to be harnesses made by Yakima Bait. They're called the Hammer Time Harness. Uh, Jake and myself designed these several years ago for Yakima and they've just been spot on for us. It's just a deadly effective uh, harness. They come in a number four, a number five, and a number six Colorado blade. And by the way, those are the three most popular sizes. Well, the idea here is to let the bottom bounce her down until we get her just in contact with the bottom, let out approximately another foot of line. I'm tending to hold the rod today. The bite's been a little bit more fickle, finicky. So I find if I hold the rod, I'm doing a little bit. Uh, there's one right there, Gabe. Right there. Just just let her down, and right away we got another <laughs> one on. Oh, that's part I hate of it the, when, you, when a fish inter interrupts an interview. <laughs> That's part of the part of the contact there of holding that rod in hand. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. Does no, it? no, so, that's that's as quick as it can get. In the TV world, we call that live roll. <laughs> that's beautiful. You caught one on live roll. Nice fish too. Another good fish. Mark, we might have found we may have found another spot to fish. Here I for don't a bit. know. I was I was about to say we needed to move, but you just smacked two good ones in a row. I think we're going to stay. I kind of. <laughs> Suggested that it wasn't a, a good move just yet. Let's check out another couple hundred yards of river. Oh, all right, Cap. No, I'll give you that one. You're you're spot on. That's a good fish, man. That is the kind of fish anybody would like to catch under the Detroit River. Yeah, the bite has been a little bit more finicky the last couple of days, in my opinion, which is my reasoning for wanting to hold the rod. A little uh, quicker reaction. You feel that thump or the the real small tap tap bite that they're giving us and uh, a little little better chance to react to the to the fish than having to reach for the rod holder and get it out when they're being this finicky. You may have noticed that we've actually been putting a little bit of pro cure on our blades and you know obviously if you're using live bait in a night crawler why do you need to add scent? Um, and the thing with a night crawler is it, it has a good earthy odor but it washes off pretty quickly and Procure is much more pungent. It's a stronger odor. It's actually made from Nightcrawler, so it's that pungent odor that we're looking for. And it's in a gel, so I can put it on the blade and it'll stay on that blade for 
30 minutes, 40 minutes, um, putting out a nice scent stream. So it's just a nice way of recharging that crawler and putting a little bit better scent stream in the water. And uh, we find that it helps us put more fish in the boat. No, no, yeah, it's no. definitely a better fish, Mark, definitely better. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for right that's there. That's more of the fish we're after. Yeah, nicely done, Don, that is a beauty. We've been getting more fish in this class in the last couple of days with the bottom bouncers. This guy here is even a little bit on the small side compared to some of what we've been getting. Uh, so we do still have some really good fish in the system that you can get with these bottom bouncers. And just, I love the fact that the river's vacant, everybody went home. <laughs> I like that one. That is a good looking fish right there. Yeah. You drop that on the tape, that's uh, probably pushing 19 inches. That's uh, close to perfection when it comes to uh, table for walleyes. The object here, you want to feel that little tick, tick, tick of that bouncer touching that bottom. Eventually, you get you get to feel where you want it. You got your tick, tick, tick. You know things are right. You'll, you'll start to gradually learn what the fish feel like hitting it. Well, at first off, I started out with a three ounce bouncer. And I can get it to the bottom and I can feel the bottom. Um, but I'm not getting very many bites on that as compared to the four ounce bouncer. The four ounce bouncer seems to be getting a little bit better bites. And, and I think the four ounce bouncer is giving me a little bit more control and being able to just tick the bottom. What they notice is that the bottom here has got a lot of moss on it. And so if you let your bouncer out a little bit too far and it drags a little bit, it's going to get that moss on it. I think that's what was happening with the three ouncer. So I'm going to go up to a, a four ounce bouncer and I'm pretty confident that that'll allow me that better tick, tick, tick content, you know, or contact to the bottom like Don was talking about, and hopefully get rid of some of that moss and get me back into the walleyes. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. The thing with downriggers is people think of them solely as deep water fishing tools, and that clearly is not the case. Obviously, a downrigger will get you to deep water, there's no question about it, but it's a depth control aid, and it can be fished in any depth of water. We're fishing in skinny water here, 15 feet to 20 feet, and yet putting the downrigger ball just down 5 to 10 feet, we've caught several cohos doing that, so it allows us to fish that water behind the back of the boat you might not otherwise use. So a downrigger is not just a deep water tool for catching fish, it's a tool for catching fish at any depth that you want to fish at. Feels, feels a little better. Fish coming out for a sunny bite right now. Sure can, looks good. Yep. <laughs> Look at him. One of the more important points about bottom bouncer fishing is actually the rod itself. And uh, you want a soft action rod. This is my favorite bottom bouncer rod. It's made by Daiwa. It's a North Coast ro rod. It actually is eight foot six inches and it's got a medium action. But more importantly, what it's got here, and if I bring this up here a little bit and grab a hold of the bouncer and pull it, you can see how it bends. It's got a nice, soft, even bend in it. And I like that because what's gonna happen here is when I put this thing in the water and start fishing it, the fish is actually going to telegraph the strike. I'm going to see the rod go like this when I get a bite, and then when that fish is actually hooked, that rod is just going to load and just go and stay like that. And that, when that rod loads is when I'm going to actually grab the rod. So I let the fish get the worm in his mouth, and then as he swims around away and starts to swallow it, that's when the rod will load, and I know he's hung himself, and all I have to do at that point is pick the rod out of the holder and start fighting it. The rod is doing most of the work, the bottom bouncer is doing the rest of the work. All you have to do is reel in the fish. This feels like a better fish, but again, we switch rods, so I'm not sure what uh, this rod here is really feeling like yet. What's amazing about this fishery, Mark, is in April, everybody's at here. You can walk across the river on boats all the way to Canada, go visit the Queen. But uh, in May, in May, everybody leaves. They all vacate. They all disappear. That is a better fish. Nobody's around. There you go. So you kind of got the river to yourself, huh? In May, you pretty much have it to yourself. A lot of, a lot of the guides right now are switching over to bottom bounce, and most of them, you know, they're, they're not real uh, welcoming of the fact. They'd rather be jigging, but uh, 
they're all doing it now and starting to get comfortable with it and realizing there's a whole lot of fish to be had and we still get some good quality fish doing it. One of the things I'd recommend on your Lawrence unit or any sonar unit you might have is to go in a split screen mode when you're fishing the Detroit River. The reason for that, obviously we want our sonar, uh, we want to see our depth and we want to mark fish. But also I want to watch my plotter screen here and my, my map charting. And the reason I want to do that is because this is border water. Approximately half of the water is in Ontario, half of the water is in Michigan. And so it's really important to know this because in Ontario you can only fish one line, but when you cross the border and get into Michigan you can fish up to three lines per person. Well, how do you know where the line is? It's easy. It's right here on your graph. It's a dotted line that you just can't miss. And what we're doing right now, we're actually right on that border. So I have to be very cautious to make sure that I stay in the Michigan side if I want to fish multiple lines. And if I slip back into Ontario for a little bit, it's okay, but I have to pull out that extra line. I can only fish one line. And with a map plotter here, it makes it obvious. You know exactly where you're at all the time. I've missed the last couple of fish being a little bit too quick on the on the drop. I'm going to make sure he's there and uh, apparently he's letting us know that he's home now. Yeah, he's definitely there. I, I got a little quick the last couple of fish and missed them. Instead of letting them uh, let me know that they're there, I was trying to force feed them and make sure that they were there. This guy here, I took a little more time and he let me know that he was there. And now that we're, as Mark said, we've got numbers now. I'm not even going to ask Mark to get the net because he's busy, so we'll just flip him over the side and he's going back anyways. When I'm setting a bottom bouncer, it's not rocket science, it's pretty simple. I put the bouncer in the water, I look to make sure that the harness and the blade is rotating nice on the harness, so it's good. I open up the bale and I'm going to let it free spool, but I'm putting a little bit of tension on it. I don't want it to go down too fast, because if it goes down too fast, the bouncer can come around and get tangled in the main line. So we'll just let her free spool down here until she hits the bottom. Boop, I felt it hit the bottom. Now I'm going to hold it for a few seconds, just let everything kind of pull tight again. and. Um, Give myself maybe here five seconds or so, and then I'm going to free spool it again. Second time I feel it hit the bottom, I'm going to engage the reel, put the rod in the rod holder, and the rest is up to Mr. Walleye. Special considerations provided by Bill Lewis Lures. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Ooh, I love that feel when you first grab the rod and bring it up. You feel those first couple head shakes? Man, that is fun. That is fun. The other cool thing about bottom bouncer fishing is it's easy. I mean, quite honestly, I, I don't care what your skill set is, anybody can master a bottom bouncer. Um, you stick with the fundamentals, of keeping your speed so that your blades are rotating, maintain that bottom bouncer in contact with the bottom. Um, you really can't go very far wrong. Oh, you're not terrible big here. Don, but he is putting down a big tussle. There we go. More of the same. Cookie cutter fish now. Yeah, it's kind of like catch. Ooh, he's slippery. Come out of there. It's more like catch fish, rebate, catch more fish, throw them back. <laughs> it's been that kind of day. Well, Don, it's, I got to ask you a question. The Detroit River is approximately 30 miles long. There's the upper river, the middle part of the river, the lower river. Everybody seems to have a preference for where they want to be. Obviously, we're in the upper river. Um, talk to me a little bit about your preferences and how you look at the Detroit River. I think my preference mark for the, the upper part of the river seems to be a little wider, a little more area. We've got less people early in the season, it seems. We've got great accommodations at Sinbad's Marina where I keep my boat. Uh, we also have the opportunity at Sinbad's, when we're all done, we can go in there for the catch and cook once we clean up the fish and take them inside. They'll, they'll cook them up for the people. It's, a, it's an awesome treat for the anglers at the end of the day. Kind of hard to beat that. Um, now, and I had never been at Sinbad's before uh, we came down to visit you here. That's a nice setup. There's no question about it. Uh, I can understand why the charters love that area. Uh, we actually launched at something called St. Jean's today, which is only just a, a stone's throw away from uh, Sinbad's. So, nice launch facility, gated, protected, and uh, so you can feel nice and safe down here. You don't have to worry about your gear when you're out fishing. You don't and, feel like and, a bad fish. In the right? golfing world, Mark, we like to say St. Jean's is a par five away from Sinbad's. Oh, there you go. 
I still can't match your fish. Yours is a, you're averaging a little better than I am, but I'm catching up. They're getting bigger. Some good but, fish. Uh, good fish. Eh, longer, maybe not bigger. I don't know. <laughs> I guess longer and bigger are both are, are relative terms, but uh, we're sure having fun on the Detroit River today. You know, we bounced around quite a bit today. We started in Ontario waters, we slipped across to Michigan waters. Um, as the day has progressed and the light came up, the ability to be able to run extra rods in Michigan really has helped. And uh, this is quality fish here, Don. This is much better. Uh, it's a, more like what you uh, catch on a daily basis here in the Detroit. Yeah, that's a very good fish. Yeah. Very good. Very we'll, uh, good. We'll grab him out of there and shut him off. But uh, the system is literally, uh, if you'll excuse the word, I get redundant and say litter again. The system is just littered with fish of this caliber. And uh, that's why, it's, uh, in clear conscience, I can tell people if you come and fish to Detroit and pull spinners in the month of May, you're going to go home a happy camper. A little better feeling fish this time. Now, I can't thank you enough for uh, turning this on to this bite today, man. This has been a lot of fun. Well, I I'm mean, glad, glad you're coming down, Mark, and glad to be a part of the show. Never, is, never uh, got to be a celebrity. Oh, it's a much better fish much there, better guys. Fish, much yeah. better fish. Much better fish. Woo, look at him go. He saw you, and he did not like that. Much better. Well, hey, my name is Mark Romanak, and I appreciate you watching Fishing 4 on 1 today. I'd like to thank my friend uh, Captain Don for showing us some great bottom bouncer fishing on the Detroit River. If you get a chance and you like what you saw today, check us out on Facebook, and also check out our new newsletter. I think you'll enjoy it. Hey, come to the Detroit River, catch yourself a whole bunch of these walleyes. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 4 on 1 is brought to you by... Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, Bill Lewis Lures, and Jay's Sporting Goods. So we'll see if we just got into a pot of smallmouth or whether we got uh, a walleye in a smallie. No, oh, I just got a small walleye. That's a, just a modest one. A smallie? Yep, a smallie. That's exactly what it is. That's a perfect definition. A smallie.